All right, thank you. Let's hear it for Ali and Remy. They had a great speech earlier. Okay, so as I was preparing for tonight, like one thing that you'll notice whenever you sh share Jesus with anyone is like, like whatever you're going to talk about them with, like God will instantly, like that stuff starts happening in your life. So you have stuff to share with people. And that's happened with me a lot. And what I've felt led to talk about is loving our enemies. And that's one of the things that like just lately in my life, it, it's really been real to me. And there's been a lot of opportunities for me to do that. So I'm going to read a passage out of the Bible right now. It's Luke 6. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. So, when you read something like that, it's kind of like, like that's the exact opposite of what culture says. Like, if you think about it from a natural sense, does it really make any sense at all? Love your enemies. Like, they're your enemies for a reason. Like, you hate your enemies... But, like, that's really not what Jesus calls us to do. And one opportunity that Jesus had to love his enemies is when he was crucified. So just to go through the story and paint a more vivid picture, Jesus was captured. They took him away, and they ordered him to be whipped. And if you've ever seen the movie pa Passion, of a Passion for the Christ, I think, it, it's a great movie, and it depicts this very vividly. So one of the things that they did, they would take these whips, and it was like leather straps with these really sharp metal hooks on the end of them. And Jesus would be kneeling down, and there's these big, huge, jacked, muscular guys that are just whipping the crap out of Jesus. Like chunks of skin are flying. He's bleeding all over the place. Like it, it's extremely sad. And like, so Jesus is almost dead when he even starts to walk to Calvary. And he... He gets up his cross, and he has to walk miles to this hill. And it's not just like a flat, open field like this. Like, there is hills all over the place, and Jesus has to walk, huge following after him. Well, when they get to the hill, they take nails, like huge finishing nails, and drive one through each of his hands, each of his feet. And then they take this crown of thorns, and they put it on his head. And like, when I was a kid, I always thought like, a crown of thorns on his head, like, yeah, that would hurt, but it's, it's not really that big of a deal. Like, no, they pressed the thorns into his head. Like, just imagine how Jesus felt. Like, how would you feel if you're up on a cross, blood dripping down your face, sweat dripping down your face? Like, it honestly just gives me chills thinking about it. That would be so awful. And the Romans are down at his feet, laughing at him, yelling at him, spitting at him. I just cannot imagine how Jesus felt in that moment. And I know for me, like, it would be so hard for me not to yell at them and hate on them too. But you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. That's love. Like, if nothing else is love, that's love. Because, like, Jesus was absolutely hated by these people. And it would, would have been so easy for Jesus to hate them too but he didn't. And that's, that's what he calls us to, too. So, like, tomorrow you're probably not going to be crucified, and you're not going to have a chance to do exactly what Jesus did. But there are opportunities in our life when we can love our enemies. And our enemies don't have to be people who absolutely hate us, or that we absolutely hate them. Our enemies can be people, something as simple as people who betray you, or a, a relationship that didn't work out. And one opportunity lately in my life when this happened, uh, a couple weeks ago I was in a car accident, totaled my car, and it was really just I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I mean, not really much I could do about it. it wasn't my fault, but my car got totaled. It was a really scary situation for me, but 
like in that moment, I, I already knew what I was going to talk about tonight. And it's like, good one, God. Like, I get a chance to love my enemies now. So, like, I, it would have been so easy for me to get out of the car and, and yell at the other guy. But I got out of the car, and I just stayed off to the side. And then a little while later, he came over and he apologized to me. Said that he was really sorry, and it was like, like that's such a great picture of what godly love should look like. And a lot of times we think of love and like love in a relationship sense, like kind of the lovey-dovey love. Well, I think the most important thing, the most important type of love is like is loving people as a friend. And um, one thing that is like really hits home. Life isn't fair. I promise you, life will not be fair. And another thing people always say, God will never give you more than you can handle. That's so false. God will always give you more than you can handle. Because if he gives you what you can handle, there's no reason that you would need him. God will always give you something that you need to lean on him for. Just like Allie and Remy talked about. Like, God will always put that injury or that setback in your life, so you have to lean on him and bring you closer to him. And that's really the best thing that we could ask for, even though it doesn't seem like it at the time. And a lot of times in your Christian walk, you're going to help people, and people aren't going to help you back. Like, you're going to give a lot, and you won't receive as much. But, and like in the time, it seems so unfair, and maybe in the natural sense it is. But we have to know that as Christians... Like, our repayment for what we give people comes in heaven when we get to spend the rest of eternity with Jesus Christ. That's the best thing we could ever ask for. So, I was get, starting to think, like, like, not many people love like this. Like, what would happen if people did start to love like this? What would it look like? Like, what if we really did start reacting in love and God took away our hate? And what if the entire culture changed? Like, wouldn't that be great? And... So let's make a difference. Let's be the change we want to see. And when people start to notice that, tell everyone, just follow me. Thank you.